time you glance at that, I know you had a hand and bet accordingly. Mm. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Poker face. And that's what it's all about, yes. Now, you're a born loser, David. You write it all in your face. To win at this game, you've got to play your cards close to your chest. Well, you certainly do that, Jack. That's why you lose, all of you. They're too open. Never let the others know what you're thinking, David. Hide your strength or your weaknesses, or you'll give the game away. I'm not a ruddy mind reader, Edwards. If you didn't know what to do, why didn't you ask me? I thought it was just production making excuses. Well, it wasn't, was it? No, but having worked for them, I know they don't often let sales down. But well, this time they have. Yes. Could we have bought out? I suppose so. Well, you know very well we have the authority. Yes, but I wasn't sure whether I had personally. And given the circumstances... Given the circumstances? I'd have thought the circumstances were perfectly straightforward enough. It would have increased the overall cost. We'll increase the overall cost by a bloody sight more if we lose our best customer. Why didn't you tell me production said they couldn't let us have them this time? They would have done, but they had that stoppage for two days last week. Then you must have known production couldn't make it. I thought that you were aware of that. How long have you been with me? Six months? Seven. But this situation has never arisen before. You should have anticipated this. I can't sit over you all day. I'm not a ruddy wet nurse. Sorry. You're being sorry won't change anything. What shall we do? I could get on to Premier Packaging. I know their works manager. He could help us out. No, I think you've done enough on this one. I've checked with dispatch. They've got enough for a further three days at a pinch. Well, that's something, I suppose. Anything else? What? Any other little disaster you haven't let me in for yet? Look, Mr. Davis, I do try to do my job efficiently. I didn't let this happen deliberately. And it would help me if you could, from time to time, give me a clearer indication of what you wanted from me. We worked out a system, didn't we? You worked out the system. Well, I have got a few years' experience behind me. I've learned a few of the pitfalls in that time. Yes, but I haven't, Mr. Davis. Well, you didn't join yesterday. If you'd kept your eyes and your ears open, that way you would have learned. I'm sorry. Leave it with me. I'll try and sort it out. No, no, no. I'll sort it out. After all, it's my job, isn't it? Look, I don't think I'm being unfair when I say if you'd done what you've been told to do, this cock-up would never have happened. Okay. Let's put it down to experience. But learn from your mistakes. He's a self-righteous bastard, that one. What did he say? Learn from your mistakes. Mistakes is all we'll bloody learn here. You're taking this one a bit hard, aren't you? Oh, it's not just this one, Frank. I've been regretting my move from Charlton for months. Well, don't worry so much. Davis will sort it out. That's what he said. And that's not the point. To him, a, a job is just a matter of telling people to do things and then waiting for the crunch. Even if he is good at clearing up a mess, I mean, surely there's more to it than that. But he doesn't bear grudges, at least grant him that. Now, I've got some really big ghoulies in my time and nothing's appeared on my yearly appraisal. I didn't transfer to get nothing on my appraisal. Well, why did you then? If David Charlton was such a 
superstar? I don't know. After seven months here, I feel I've achieved nothing. I don't see how anyone could. Thanks very much. I didn't mean that, Frank. I just feel that with Davis, he'll only be happy as long as we do exactly what he says and don't rock the boat too much. Was Charlton so different? Yes, he was. With him, you felt he wanted you to improve. He took time out to talk about the job. He wanted to know what you thought. And never criticised. Of course he criticised. But it wasn't destructive. You felt that you gained from his experience. And he might have learned a bit from yours. That's what it was. You learned. Not just from your mistakes like this one, but from the whole situation. You're a bit of an ambitious sod, aren't you? Aren't you? Well, not really. I do a reasonable job, I think. Keep my nose clean. Maybe I look for less in the job than you do. Perhaps he's made you look for less. Oh, come on. You could do a lot worse. You can't accuse him of being idle or disinterested. Disinterested in what? In the department. In the department improving? How is it going to improve if we don't? Do you feel that you have? Well, I set my sights a bit lower, that's all. But look at this cock up, Frank. Will we know what to do next time? We won't even know how he sorts it out. We'll just moan among ourselves. Now, if we'd all got together to begin with, put our point of view, heard his, we might just have avoided this. Now, I got... know what you're going to say. Charlton would have done it. Hmm. Well, he doesn't always win. I played poker with them last night. Davis took us all to the cleaners, including Superstar. Told Charlton, in fact, he was a damn sight too open. Which he, of course, was not. Oh, makes a virtue of it. Play your cards close to your chest, he said. Yes, he bloody well would. Do we spend the entire evening in silence? No. Sorry, love. I was just doing the crossword. <laughs> this one's been mooning about all evening, too. What are you after? Borrow your calculator, Dad. What for? To do my match. You've got your own calculator. Eh? Between your ears. Oh, Dad. I can do it in a quarter of the time. You mean the transistors can do it in a quarter of the time? That's not going to help you. I've tried and I can't do it. All right. Have one more stab at it, then bring your books here. We'll look at it together. That way you may learn something. We'll use the calculator afterwards to check if we were right. Old Potter was carrying on this morning because none of us got anything right. And he never shows us properly. It's rotten. Yeah, I know the feeling. Anyway, they're not transistors. What? In that calculator. It's an integrated circuit. We live and learn. Since when has the crossword been among the situations vacant? Is it as bad as all that? Would you mind if I got out, Sue? Oh, I would. Thought you were happy there. I was. Until the move. I always thought it was a promotion. So did I. With Davis, it feels like the end of the line. I'm just not developing at all. Frank thinks I'm exaggerating. Got a fixation about Charlton's style. Well, was he that good? I learned a lot from him, Sue. The Davis. It's like Stephen and the calculator. You get things done, but you know better for it. But do you have to get out? Couldn't you just move back to Charlton's department? <laughs> I'd love to see Davis's face. It's bloody embarrassing, David, coming to you behind my back. I think he might have been a bit more open. Well, I think you'll find he will be, Jack. I told him that I wouldn't even discuss a move until he sorted it out with you. It's not as if I'm a tyrant with my people. Every one of them knows I'm interested in their problems. I didn't think Edwards was a sly one. I don't think he is. But he obviously feels that he's not getting on as he should. Improving was how he put it. After only six months with me, he got a bloody nerve. Oh, come on, Jack. We've known each other long enough not to take it personally. You want to get rid of him? No, no, I don't. After all, you recommended him. I've never regretted taking him on. But on this improving business, how much time do you spend with him? A while. Sorting out his job. Well, as much time as I can afford. No less than others in the department. But you know what the pressures are. 
Yes, I do. But it is an investment, the time given to coaching your staff. Well, you've been trained. I let him off on two courses while he's been with me. No, I didn't mean off the job training. I meant day to day. Well, he's got a tongue in his head. He wants to know anything he can ask. Uh, do any of your other people feel the same? Well, they never said so. But do you know? Sir, so, I've got a tongue in my head and I could have asked. I didn't mean it as a criticism. I found that I was getting so caught up in routine that I was taking my staff for granted. I had to make a really conscious effort to coach people in what they were doing. I still do. You're lucky to have the time. Certainly it takes time. But if I don't take the time, I'll spend even more on sorting out the cock-ups. Like the one Edwards made. Are you trying to tell me that spending a few more minutes with a man would have prevented that? No, there's no magic formula about coaching your staff. It's even difficult to define. It's simply trying to turn a work problem into a learning situation. How else are we all going to improve, as Edwards puts it, David? I've heard too many half-baked management philosophies in my time. I don't think this one is half-baked. Take us, Jack. You've taught me to play poker. Well, at least the rudiments. But you're not going to get much satisfaction if I don't improve my game. You did a bit of coaching yourself the other night. Perhaps I was wrong. If I kept quiet, I'd go on raking it in. Uh, you're not that kind of player. There are plenty of those around, though. Managers who think if they bring on their staff, they're going to get pushed out themselves. You know me better than that. Yes, yes, of course I do. And I know you're a damn good manager. But how do you become one? I mean, none of us just picked it up by ourselves. Somebody along the line must have taken the time to teach us. Well, Edwards obviously thinks you're better for him than I am. Jack, it took a few boshy ones to make me think. And in almost every case, it was the same thing. They were just being told what to do. They didn't feel involved. They weren't being asked for their opinions. They weren't developing. And you claim you changed all that? Not me. I just changed the climate a bit. And I think we're going to do that, Jack. Because whether we like it or not, people are changing. They can't be told anymore. They can't just be told. They want to see improvements, and they want to feel that they've helped to bring them about, like Edwards. Yes, I've still got to sort that out. Perhaps it's a little late for an old dog like me to change his tricks, even though he's had a bit of coaching. Ah, oh, well, I was always one for the old set box. But don't take my word for it, ask one of my blokes. Hmm, I might well do that. Coaching. I suppose it's easier with your subordinates. Why? Right. Well, they don't answer back. It's when they answer back, you know you're getting through. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'll uh, just check that that's okay with Mr. Davis. Uh, mind if I ring you back in a minute? Thanks. Well? Well, what? What did he say? Funny, really. Was he cheesed? Well, I suppose he must have been. He knew that I'd seen Charlton. Jeez. But he didn't blow his top. So he wanted a couple of days to think, and would I do something for him? Like, uh, get stuffed? No. He wants me to write out a description of my job, full one. Put down all the things I do, what I do well and not so well, and anything I can think that could be improved. You've got him rattled. And he wants to see you as well. What? Me? Now? No, he's off down to the factory. Davis on the shop floor. He got his pinstripe dirty. What the hell is he up to? Hello, Jack. You slummy? I do occasionally leave the ivory tower. Spare me a minute. I uh, will uh, go through this in a minute, Brian. In here. We might even be able to rustle you up a mug or something. No, 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 it's only for a minute. And to what do we owe the honour? Uh, coaching. You've been talking to Charlton, the gospel according to St. David. Are you sold on it? It's not a bloody product, you know. A climate, he called it. Yeah, well, uh, we're a bit harder-headed down here. No, I'd call it a, a technique, I suppose. Of what? Of training. I thought you did plenty of that anyway. Oh, yeah, operator training, safety and so on. I mean, that's pretty obvious. But management got bugger all. 
Just chuck them in the deep end. Let them get on with it. That's the way we used to think. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes? That mod on 83 you planned. It's not going to work. No, I don't think so. Uh, all right, well, uh, you get hold of Willis. And give me ten minutes. And we'll all give it a think. Okay. Well, there's a perfect example, Jack. I could have said, make the bloody thing work. And he would have done. So? Well, I wouldn't be any the wiser, would I? That's all Charlton is trying to do. Make us learn a bit more from the job. Instead of just getting on with it. They breed you cynical in sales. I thought it was a load of rubbish to begin with. All right. Tell me in practical terms, what have you done? We've got two superintendents, 10 supervisors, 40 charge hands. All managers of one kind or another. Now, we all try to look at the job in a slightly better sort of way. There are three main things. How we can improve it. How long will it take to improve? Has it been improved? Well, didn't you do that anyway? Yeah, we had a slapdash sort of way. That's one of the things we thought we could improve on. The slapdash. And it caught off. Just like that. Ah, no, no, we had to work at it. Plan it a bit. Not just wait for things to go wrong. With all this going on around you, where the hell did you find the time? Did you find it? Somewhere? Look at me. I spend half my time telling people what to do. The other half, telling them again because they didn't do it properly. So how is it different? We just try and help our managers to think a bit more for themselves. Delegate a bit. You've got to look at a job as something to learn from. It's simple enough, but most people don't bloody well do it. We didn't. Not in an organized way. Ted, you've got a touch of the evangelist yourself. <laughs> well, you're under the first lesson. Look around you, Jack. The people on this floor have got a lot of skill. But they didn't just pick it up. It had to be taught on the job. Couldn't management be taught a bit better? He owed me that at least. Hmm. I owe you. What? That's what we think our staff should be saying to us. I owe you loyalty. I owe you my best efforts. <laughs> Try telling him that. Hmm. Well, yes, but shouldn't we be saying, I owe you interest, fair hearing, progress. In fact, I owe you the benefit of my experience. That's what uh, coaching is all about, Jack. But it doesn't need to be skill. Back to that again. What skill, David? After 20 odd years in this game, I ought to be good enough by now. To me, it's just good old fashioned common sense. Well, of course, nothing obscure about it. Perhaps one could define coaching as common sense codified. Well, where did I dip out with Edward? I never kept him in the dark. If he needed to know anything, I told him. Yes. But did you listen enough? You're always ready to listen to another argument. Yes, but that supposes that you put your point of view first. Look, I'm head of the department. Surely I'm entitled to a point of view. Of course. But isn't it better to ask? Tell me what you think you ought to do, rather than I'll tell you what I think you ought to do. And then expect the chap to have the courage to contradict you if he sees it another way. So I go around wide-eyed and wondering, just asking questions. Oh, come on, Jack. How many management problems have only one solution? There's more than one way of skinning a rabbit. With your experience, it's quite probable that yours will be the best. But it doesn't always follow. So ask his opinion. Why not? If you can keep an open mind. He hasn't had many brilliant flashes while he's been with me. How do you know? His problem is he's easily deflated. Well, most of us are. Is it too late for me to reflate him with a bit of coaching, David? Maybe. It's not something you can pull out in a crisis. It's a long-term operation. However, you've got to start somewhere. What you need is a plan. All right. The school okay for tonight, Dave? School? Focus school. Have me one in for a minute. Uh -huh. Yes, my place, as usual. A pair, two pairs, 
three of a kind, a straight, a flush, a full house, a four of a kind, a running flush. Right? Very good. No checklist tonight. Perhaps I'm the one who needs a checklist. Because I'm learning a new game, too. 25p, 35, 45, 50, and a pound. One pound fifty. I've got a good mind to report you to the Prices Commission. Sixty p up, and that makes it a good night to you all. Good night. Good night. Good night, thank you. I forgot the hands again. I told you I should have kept that checklist. Hang on for a moment. I want to ask you for a different one. Huh? Checklist. All right. How much? Uh, three fifty, I'm afraid. Oh, my God. That'll have to be an I owe you then. Oh, forget it. Put it down to experience. Boy, uh, paid up. <laughs> I'll let you both off for a bit of advice. I'll give you the advice. And the I.O.U. There you go. Now, what is it? Your blueprint for coaching. I suppose Ted here would call it his checklist. <laughs> well, well. I do believe he's beginning to nibble at the bait. No plan's going to help you, Jack, unless you get the climate right. Well, it's a start, yes. I found it was. All right. Action plan. There are five points, like a poker hand. Mm -hmm. Ted, deal in one. We reckon that you could look at almost any job in a methodical way. One, opportunities. In other words, what do you want to change? Or achieve. In what? Well, in your manager's knowledge, in his skill, in a system, anything. Getting better means making a change in something. Number one is being clear what change it is you're looking for. Right. Two. Targets. How will you recognize that you've accomplished the change? Me or my subordinate? Both of you, together. Or a team, if that's how you want to organize it. Three. Timing. How long will you give yourselves to make the change? For me, it's always yesterday. We all say that, but fixing a deadline and a reasonable one sharpens the senses a bit. Four, tactics. How will you go about it? What methods will you use? Who else will be involved? That sort of thing. Mm, that's the difficult bit. Once you've got one, two, and three clear in your mind, you'll find the methods become a bit clearer. Five. Monitor. Or measure. What? If you're making progress. You and your staff will need to know that. Mm. We've had a case of that, haven't we? Yeah. Hey, what about this? A flush. <laughs> Do you want to change any? No, no, no. I'll stay with those. I'll take that for a start. Uh, wait a minute. You might find it better to make one of your own. <laughs> I'm a beginner at the game. I always find it better to commit a checklist to memory. Sire. <laughs> Three months. Will you give it that? Look, I know the atmosphere hasn't been right for you, maybe. Uh, perhaps it hasn't been right for others either. But I think we can change all that. I don't say it's going to happen overnight, but I'm willing to have a try. Well, don't think that I'm not. Perhaps we can have a shot at it. With a bit more of a plan this time. Yeah. What do you think of that? I owe you 350, signed D. Chom. Oh, that's a good start. Um, I think I'd better get rid of that. Perhaps they end up owing him something. Uh -huh.